actually one thing, I think we're going to start with step three. So this is actually the easiest one. Start with step three. We know that previously when you have the, um, uh, and I will write out one matrix just to show how we're going to formalize this here, uh, dx, dy, dz, c, d, t, and you have your matrix here, the Lorentz transformation matrix, gamma, 1, 1, gamma, what was that, minus v over c squared, gamma, minus gamma v, whatever. That gave us out dx prime, dy prime, dz prime, uh, c, d, t prime. So I'm just going to turn this into, into um, more compact notation now. I'm just going to write this as dx prime. And you know what? I'm actually going to leave out the, you know, I will, I will keep the mu's here. So it, it's a four vector. We should treat it as such. dx prime mu. And that's equal to the uh, Lorentz transformation matrix here was gamma, and we have dx, mu. Now, the mu doesn't need a prime. It's just, it always stands for 1, 2, 3, and 4. There's no such thing as 1 prime, 2 prime, 3 prime, 4 prime. The, 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 the prime specifically goes to the coordinates with which we're measuring space-time intervals. So we know that's true. And that's really all that we need to do for step three. And I think, um, yeah, so I, I think maybe we're going to do this the other way. We're going to uh, write ds squared using all the variables from, D, uh, from s prime, in fact. Anyway, okay, so we have step one. We know that ds squared was originally dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared minus c squared dt squared. Now, one thing, it's, it's very often conventional to treat the time component as positive and to treat the space component as negative. Literally, half the textbooks in the world use one system, half the textbooks in the world use the other. Um, there is a divide between um, the relativity textbooks for like uh, cosmologists and the relativity textbooks that, uh, qu that uh, quantum physicists or quantum field theorists use. Um, this is the system we're going to stick with, damn it, I don't care. Um, I, do, I do think that this corresponds with the uh, relativistic uh, signature, I believe. Uh, and I think that's why um, the textbook that we have here, I think it, they use the, the opposite signature because they're more experimental uh, particle physicists. But anyway, it doesn't really matter. You just flip the sign. Um, that does mean, though, by the way, as you recall, and this is just entirely as a refresher, for a um, space-like separation... What sign does ds squared here have? Do you recall? So for a space-like separation, what that means is the space component. So you have um, a differential dx, you have a differential dy, differential dz, and differential time dt. The space component is larger than the time component. So in other words, this is greater for a space-time separation, for a space-like one. So that means this whole thing has a positive sign. For a time-like, that means that there's more time that's elapsed in that. The time component, component is larger than the space component. So that means as a negative sign for a light light, well, light light doesn't really matter. It's zero for light light. But what that means, by the way, um, if you're using the other, the other coordinates or the other sign system where the space is negative, time is positive, you have to just flip those as well. Because obviously if you're adding CDT and subtracting space, a uh, time-like separation would, in fact, be positive. Um, again, that's, that's just a note that it's entirely possible if you're consulting other resources, it's very likely you're going to come up with a different uh, system than we're using here. So, anyway, with that said, um, as you recall, this formula here, you can more formally write as, remember, we have dx, dy, dz, c, d, t, times, so this is the row vector portion times 1, 1, 1, minus 1 
times dx dy dz c dt. So almost like the um, just the identity matrix with the, the last element flipped there. And that's exactly what this ds squared you can write as. So this thing here, this is actually the same as our dx, and remember it's dx mu, but it's transposed. Literally you just flip it like that. That's how to transpose a column matrix into a row matrix. So this is actually the way we can write this here, dx mu transposed, and this is, hi, <laughs> sorry, I don't know why that's so amusing to me. Um, this is, now we can write this as, instead of writing it as dx mu transpose, the way that we're gonna more efficiently compactly write that is we're gonna treat this as dx, and we're just gonna write the mu on top. So by, and actually, let me just write it here. dx, uh, no, that's fine. So we have a transpose of a row vector that we have with a subscript. When you transpose that, you just now write it as a superscript. Now, to be clear, this is not an exponential factor. It's not taking it to the power of mu. It's just simply an upper index instead of a lower index. Um, and the further on you get in math and engineering, you're going to start using upper and lower indices just interchangeably. Um, this means something very important once you get to um, what's called differential geometry. I'm not going to fully get all the way there, but the upper does indicate that it's a column vector. Lower indicates that it's a, uh, sorry, I said that the other way. Upper indicates a, a row vector. Um, okay, so I need to erase a little bit here um, because we're almost, oh, and then by the way, this matrix here, this is just our um, Minkowski metric, which that's what we're treating as big eta. And then here, this is just our dx mu as a column vector. So I'm going to rewrite that here, and we're actually pretty close to, to being done now. Um, but this is kind of where things get a little bit interesting. Um, now we're going to really formalize this. And again, you always read this, in this case here, when you're, when you're taking a starting package, basically, you're going to operate or act on it with this, and the result of that, then you're going to tack it onto this here. So we start with a 1 by 4, operate with a 4 by 4, that gets us a, um, sorry, I said 4 by 1, operate with that, gets us back to a 4 by 1 like that. 4 by 1 times 4 by 1, sorry, 4 by 1 times 1 by 4 gets us out 1 by 1. So again, just a, I think I said that slightly incorrectly, but 4 by 1 times this matrix gets us still a row vector, which is a column vector. And then those two end up being essentially taking two vectors and spitting out a scalar. So here's what we have. ds squared equals dx mu upper times eta times dx mu lower. Now, we're gonna, I'm going to uh, come back to this in a moment here. We're going to kind of evaluate it term by term, but I just want to go with this here now. So we just completed step one. Here's exactly how we're going to compute our space-time interval in the, S, in the S frame. Now, for step two. So, again, we didn't quite do it in order. We did three first anyway. So step two, now what I want to do is I want to do the same thing except ds prime squared. And the nice easy thing is that nothing about this Minkowski metric changes. When you go from one frame to the other, you don't change one into anything else. That, ma uh, that matrix will always be the same. So all you do is you take that same space-time event differential right here, d dx, dy, dz, c, d, t, and you just look at it from the prime frame. So really, this is just dx prime mu times, big, times eta, same thing, times d 
DX Prime Mu Upper. And you see where we're going with this here. So now step, <laughs> step three again, we're going to look back here and we already have notation for this. We have this notation here, which is dx mu prime, but we know how to compute that. We put gamma in front of it. That's the uh, Lorentz matrix, as you call. So we, we know that dx mu lower here equals gamma dx mu. And what we're going to do now is we're going to plug this into here. We don't need to change anything about this. Now, this thing here, we have a little bit of work. We can't just strictly plug this into that, because here this has an, a superscript. Uh, specifically, we need to take this and transpose this. find dx prime mu upper transpose dx prime mu lower. That board is getting really messy there. But anyway, that's what we're going to need to do to find this. We need to transpose this thing here. So here's our diagram, transpose. So I hope you see the roadmap here. Once we plug in the transposed, the, the transposed dx and the normal thing involving dx, we have a new expression for ds squared in the prime frame using these variables there. They're not going to perfectly match, but we're, there's kind of a nice trick that'll work out here. So I'm going to erase the right-hand board. Um, and, and by the way, you know, pause this or just kind of um, uh, uh, think about while I erase the board how you can actually, like, what the finished uh, part of the proof is here. Because at this point here, you re really could kind of use everything that we have and work it out for yourself. There's just a little bit of algebra you have to do. Okay, so uh, remember, we're going to start with this phrase right here, this equation right here, and we're going to transform these into the unprimed components. So I'll just rewrite this right here. dx prime squared equals dx... Me, uh, dx prime mu, eta, dx prime mu lower. And before we can go further, we need to figure out how to take that transpose. dx prime mu equals gamma dx mu. Now remember, this the way that we're writing this as a lower, this is a four by one matrix. That's what a, a column matrix is. That means that this whole thing here has to be a four by one matrix. To transform a four by one matrix and take the transpose of it specifically, the way that you do that is as follows. And I'll try to explain it here in a moment. The transpose of so let's, and I'm going to do this a little more generally. If you have matrix A that's equal to, um, let's say, M times B, M is a matrix, A and B are row vectors, so I'm no longer worrying about the, um, the, the index here. That's true in all uh, directionalities, whether it's a three, ve a three vector, four vector, so on. If you want to take the transpose of this, the way that you do it is this. Instead of doing M transpose uh, B transpose, I'll explain why this won't work. In this case here, what this means, and by the way, it's not equal to that, to be entirely clear. And I'm going to show exactly why that can't be true. The reason is that the transpose of a 1 by 4, the transpose of a 4 by 1, the transpose of a column vector is a row vector, one by four matrix. So this has to be a one by four. Now, in this case here, the transpose of uh, a matrix, if, if we are working four dimensions, is going to be a one by four. 
And if you take the transpose of a 4x4, four four, you know, in this case, you just flip the, the, the off diagonal elements. You go from the, the, the element that was 2, 3 is going to become 3, 2. The element was 1, 4 is going to become 4, 1. That's how you, that's how you offset a um, transpose a 4x4 four four matrix. But this is a 4x4 four four matrix still. When you transform a, transform a square matrix, it will remain a square matrix. Now here's a question. According to the rules of analysis, of linear algebra, I should say, you have a 4x4. Four four. Again, it works in 3x3, three 2x2, three, two two, whatever. How can you... What's the... Let's see. I'm trying to remember the rules for multiplying this here. I think this is a, a, nonsen a nonsensical answer. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, but this is... Nonsense. The dimensionality by the, by the proper rules of matrix multiplication doesn't get an answer. You can't take a 4x4 four four times a 1x4. Um, and the way to prove that, if you were to sum it out, you have to multiply along the, the row and the column uh, indices separately, and two of those have to match at some point. You can't get that in this case here. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to check on that after the lecture, but I'm pretty sure that's a proof why this doesn't work, because you can't end up with a 1x4 in this case here. You can, however... If you do this, the way to transpose this, remember matrices work in reverse, the way to get a 1 by 4 is to start with a 4 by 4, so dot 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 dot. If you take a 4 by 4, multiply it by a 1 by 4, what you get here, that first element, you take that row, so that column, flip it, multiply it by that, you get up the first element there. The second one, do the same thing, one, two, three, four. This works. And that's exactly how, how we transform this. The transpose of an operator times a column vector is a row vector, B transpose, times M transpose. So this is what we would call then, by the way, uh, yeah, it's what A transpose is, literally. So this is the rule that we have to use here. If you have an operator times a column vector, which is what our dx mu lower is, when you transpose that to get this element there, you have to flip the order as well. So by the way, this is, this is something that, um, that you likely would have seen in, in a linear algebra class. Um, this is a, a fairly standard, um, it's not even really a proof, it's just a, a following the, the rules for how to do linear analysis. This is also a 4 by 1. So we now know that dx, and I'll just write it like this, dx prime mu upper is going to be gamma transpose, which, don't think too hard about what that is. Actually, no, it, it does change just a little bit. I'll, we'll, we'll write it out. Uh, but gamma transpose times dx mu. Nope. It's dx mu transpose, but we, we already have a better notation for that. We just write it like that. So basically, we're entirely set now. We have all of our notation ready at our disposal. We can now write this uh, differential here in the prime frame using unprimed variables. And we're going to get a nice, easy criterion to evaluate whether or not that's true. So let's go ahead here. So this is the actual proof part of it. We're going to take ds prime squared equals dx prime mu eta dx prime mu. Remember, that's the Minkowski metric there. Now, I'm going to start on the right-hand side. Remember, dx prime mu 
is just gamma dx mu without a prime. So this is our transformed column vector, now using our original unprimed coordinates. And we're going to operate on that with our Minkowski metric. It's still, this is still a 4 by 1 column vector times this operator remains a 4 by 1 column vector. So now we're taking a column vector, which has been operated on twice, and now we're going to take the transpose of this, which is down right here. So uh, click, and, uh, click and drag. We have, all right, like this, gamma transpose times dx mu. Ah, dang it. dx mu upper. So at this point, can you see what we have to evaluate? We're really close to having this, and by the way, it's an equals there. We're really close to having the same expression as this right there. So if we could somehow just eliminate these gammas, the gamma and gamma transpose, if you can get rid of them, that's exactly the same expressions we have for there, ds, uh, just normal ds squared. So what this, what this turns into is a question of if this equals eta, if gamma transpose eta, gamma transpose equals eta, then our proof is correct, or, or, or we have proved our statement true. If we can replace that with eta, then we have directly shown we're good. I'll just put a check mark there. So this is, do you see how this kind of the direct logic has to come out? And do you see why this notation actually makes it quite easy? All right, so let's get to the final heart of the proof, uh, the, the heart of the proof. And by the way, I encourage you to, you know, try to do it for yourself real quick. Plug in the matrices that we have here, and you should find rather quickly that yes, that absolutely is true.